I, I greet you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You must be happy. Amen. It's a very wonderful day today. It's always nice to meet this way. You know, nice to come together. You know, the Bible says how lovely it is, how wonderful it is for brothers to be together. You know, it is like uh, the olive oil running down the, the beards of Moses. Because there's always unity, you know, when we come together, there's always corporate anointing that we release. So today is a very, very special day, as, um, as another has mentioned this uh, when we started at the intercession. That is a Pentecostal day. Amen. I mean, this is a day that uh, the Holy Spirit arrived here on earth with a bang. You know, he arrived here with a bang. And uh, people saw things that they've never seen before. So we, we are very, very, uh, as we are a Pentecostal church. You know, I said to you, we are, last time, that we are a Pentecostal church, unapologetic. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that Christians, for them to be able to be what God wants them to be, then they need really to be filled by the Holy Spirit. So we, we just want to thank God that we started here. God has just been blessing us in a very special way. So today is also not just the Pentecostal day, but it's also, you know, uh, the beginning of, uh, of the youth month, which is June, you know, youth month that um, we always celebrate every year, uh, heading towards the 16th of June. So this is another important month to us. So there's Pentecostal, and it's very, very uh, 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 coincidental that the youth month is really, you know, coinciding with the, the coming of the Holy Spirit. In 1976, the, you know, when, when the Soviet uprising started, the people were saying all around that young people, there is a spirit that has entered the young people. Because people never saw what young people were doing. And everybody could see there is a kind of spirit that has really entered young people. That young people could stand up and do what they are doing. And I think even today, God is waiting to see that young people again being filled with the spirit. Not the, not the spirit of 1976, but again the spirit that is really able to take them forward in matters of uh, the spiritual matters. So today, I just want to continue again with the subject of, uh, of, of, of my, the, that I was talking about, the ministry. You know, we, why do we need really Pentecostalism? You know, Holy Spirit is not just coming into our life because we want to be heard talking in tongues, that we want to be seen, you know, that we are powerful. It's not that. You know, I mean, as Daniel has mentioned earlier on, that Jesus said, you must stay in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit so that, you know, so that you might be what? My witnesses. So the Holy Spirit comes to us so that we should become witnesses of God. We should get into the ministry of God. And this church, as I told you, we believe very much in the ministries. So that's why we are called Rivers of Life Ministries. Because our goal, our goal is to make sure that there are ministries that are really coming up. That God is calling more people into ministries. And as I said, ministries does not necessarily mean that you should be standing in the pulpit and ministering. But ministries meaning that you should be go into the service. I don't know what kind of service that God is going to do. But whatever service that you are going to go into that. So we want you to be anointed for that. Amen. So we want you to be anointed for, for that service. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a secular service, but there must be anointing that comes with you, that comes into that. So I just want to talk this morning about this subject that says, you know, the heart, if we're talking about the ministry, the heart of the ministry is the ministry, is the heart. The heart, that is the topic I'm talking about this morning. The heart of ministry is the heart. <laughs> Amen. Do you hear what it says? The heart of ministry is the heart. We are rivers of life ministries. We are rivers of life ministries. So one thing that will hear me talking every time I stand up, because this is what God has called me. You know, God has called me to talk about ministries, and not just to talk about ministries, but also to anoint me, to, 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 to launch ministries. That's what God has called me to do, you know, to, to mentor, to do all those kind of things. So that is my, in my message. You know, sometimes God gives you one sentence, you know, one sentence, and you can preach that sentence until you die. One sentence, one sentence. I told you the other time, Moses was given one sentence because he was stammered, he stammered. But God gave him one sentence. Let my people go. Okay? So whatever way, whatever happens, he should just say that sentence. Let my people go. 
I mean, he was, he was a stammer, so he would let, 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 let my people, 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 people. But God was not, was not bothered, as long as he can finish the sentence. So he, that was the message, let my people go. So it was the message that God gave him. I mean, John the Baptist was given a message just to preach about the coming of Jesus. He who is coming, prepare the way, prepare the way for his coming, prepare the way. He even went and buckled himself, you know, staying, eating locusts, preaching one message, one sentence, let prepare the way for the Lord. Prepare. <laughs> Amen. So God gives you one message. I mean, so I always say to pastors, you know, if I ask you what is your message and you don't tell me what is your message, no, you don't know what God has called you for. Because you, God will give you one line. Every person, that person will bring, God has got one message. That message can be summarized in one, in one line. So what I'm talking about from my side, what you will hear all the time is ministries, is ministries, is ministries. That's what I'm talking. Some people talk about healing, it's healing, it's healing, it's healing. So they talk about what God has called them about. So that's why we invite other people to come and mix, I mean, you know, come and preach other things so that we are very balanced. So now, the last time I, 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 I told you that uh, there are five things. In fact, let me just show five few key verses that I want to talk about, and then I will read some of them. But because we are going for the whole communion, we'll try to. I will just try to preach on this rather than teaching. Now, the key verses is in Matthew chapter twenty-two, verse fourteen. It says, "For many are called, and few are chosen. Many are called." And if you are chosen. And then Jeremiah chapter, if you read Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 15, it says here, then I will give you um, spiritual shepherds. I will give you um, shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and true understanding. Now, there is also the book that I really will form key of my, 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 my book. It is a uh, I'm just trying to look at it here. Okay. I think it's, it's 1 Samuel verse 30, chapter 13. 1 Samuel verse 13. I just want to... Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 13 verse 14. This is exactly what I want. For verse 14 says here, But now your kingdom will not endure. Then I like the second part. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's commandment. But what I want here, the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. Okay? The Lord has sought a man, not just a man, a man or a woman after his own heart. The Lord has sought a man or a woman after his own heart. Now, the heart of the ministry is the heart. The heart of the ministry is the heart. If I identify the other time here, when what is it that we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Now, what is it? How does one move from the gifts that one has to, to ministries? So I spoke about the nine gifts. The nine gifts, remember revelation gift, the power gifts, and then the speaking gifts. Three speaking gifts, and then the revelation, three, three revelation gifts, and then the power gifts. That, so those nine gifts that I was speaking about. But now, how does one move from this, these gifts into, into, into ministries? How, what, 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 how does one move from there? If I've got this gift now, if I've got the, 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 the gift of revelation, how do I move from the gift of revelation to a ministry of revelation? How do I move from the, 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 the gift of just healing to, a, to, to healing ministry? How do I move all those other things? Now, I said there is one, you see, God, for you to be able to develop a ministry, you know, because that's the question. Now, how do I really, many people have come to me, I want to, I want to become this, you know, pastor, I want, I want to be in this ministry. I want, you know, I want to be in the ministry of giving. Mr. Nembrunga was preaching last time here about giving, about I mean, you know, sowing the seed, you know, you're not broke. You know, and there are people who always say, no, you know, I want you know, to spend my life, you know, not, not, not just receiving. I want to spend my life giving. This, you know, there are people whose ministry is just giving. 
I mean, I'm telling you, me, me, be, not millions, billions come their ways. And then they, when they woke up in the morning, they've given up everything. So they give cars, they give everything. So God gives them so that they must give. God gives them so that they must give. So it's a ministry. It's a ministry. Now, how do, how do I function in that ministry? Now, others really want to be a minister of healing. Others want to be in the ministry, want to become a pastor, like Jeremiah said here, that I'm going to send you the pastors. But what kind of pastors that I'm going to send you? The pastors that are after God's heart. Okay? Pastors, people who are after God's heart. Now, what is setting people apart now who are in the ministry is not really what they do. It is the heart. Amen. It, it is the heart. What, what set one from you? Know, what set one apart? That's what the Bible says, you know, that the, the many are called. Many are called, but few are, are chosen. Many are called. Now, there are many people who have received the call of God. God has called them. God has called them. Say, say now, look, I'm calling you for the ministry. I'm calling you to do one, two, three. But the Bible says, few are chosen. Amen. So, many are called. Many are, God calls many people. Many, many people have God's calling when they were born. In fact, the calling for everyone, you know, comes before you are born. When you, you are just born into your call. You, first, there is a purpose before you are born. But when you are born, you are born into the purpose. So when God calls you, say many, many people are called, but few are, are chosen. And the difference is really the, 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 what, the heart. I told you that for you to get into the ministry, there are five things that you need to have. It's shape. You need to take shape. So if anyone wants to say to you, no, I want to be in the ministry, you ask him, okay, let's, let's look at the shape. What is your shape? <laughs> let's, now, many people go into the mirror and look at their shape. Do, do I look tall? Do I look short? Do I look what? Do, can, can I, maybe I must be heavy. You know, I must have a big voice like maybe some of the big prophets. I, I need to have this. You know, but, but shape, simply I told you that now. For you to go into the ministry, you need to have what? The, the gift. This S means what? Spiritual gift. There must be at least a gift in you. There must be a, a gift in you. And then, of course, now you have got a... Now, age. Age. This is what I'll be talking about. Age is heart. You need to have the heart. You need to have the, the heart. So the heart is the key. And then you really need to have abilities. Abilities. Abilities that, you know, you, God cannot just put you in the same place where there are no abilities. You need to have some abilities. And then you've got P. P, which is personality. Personality, you know, I mean, usually God will give you a personality that aligns to what God wants you to do. I mean, if I'm a preacher here, you can see I'm designed by God. You know, I'm designed with a big voice. You know, I mean, I've got big voice. You know, I, 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 I'm a screamer. You know, even, even when I was late to school, people would be saying, but why do you speak? You scream when you scream. Because now, I, I, even before there were microphones, this mic stands so on, I will really preach and I'll be heard. You know, I, mean, I don't need I don't need amplifier. I don't need to be amplified, right? Because God has designed me with that. Then the personality, God gave me the personality. So I mean, that is the shape. And then, of course, experience comes in. So these five things: spiritual gift is very, very important in your life, in whatever way that you want to do. So, for example, I mean, you know, if you want to be in the in the ministry of giving, you need to be a giver. And, I mean, so I mean, then, of course, if you want to be of course, you must have the heart for that. And then you need to have the abilities to do those things. Of course, God will give you supernatural abilities for you to do these kind of things. And then, of course, your personality that God has given you. And then God will also give you the, the experience that you already have. You know, when you grow up, that God will give you into that. Now, but I want to talk much about the, the heart. Okay, amen. I want to talk about the, the heart. I'm not going to do a, pre I mean, a, a, a Bible study of this one. I really want to preach about this because that's... Now, if you look in the book of... Uh, the, 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 if, if you look... In, we read in the book of, of 1 Samuel chapter 16. 1 Samuel chapter 16. We read from verse 1 there. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I'm sending you to, uh, Je to Jesse of Be Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. Amen. Then verse 2 says here, But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul has about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. 
you are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, he, the elders of the town trembled when they saw him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourself and come to the sacrifice with me. Then, then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Now, this is what I want from verse 6. From verse 6, this is very important. I mean, David has been, I mean, I mean uh, Samuel, as, one of, as the prophet, he was sent to anoint a king. Okay? I mean, if you read the background here, Saul was a king. Saul was a king who was appointed. Someone anointed Saul when God sent him to anoint Saul. And he even prophesied. So when you read about Saul, about the future, the Bible will tell you that now Saul was a really handsome guy. He was tall. He was fit. He was, I mean, even when people chose him, they look at all these other appearances. But you know, God does not look at appearances. God looks at, a, when God anoints, go, I choose someone for a ministry, now God looks at other things. God looks at the, at the heart. God does not look at the appearance. Now, God is saying here, uh, I have rejected Saul. Now, you know, Samuel was still, still very much hurt. You know how God rejected, uh, rejected Saul. In the verse, verse 13, I mean, chapter, first Samuel chapter 13 that I've read here, verse 4, it, it shows you when God is saying, so go to, 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 to Samuel, say to Samuel, Samuel, I have rejected Saul. I have rejected Saul. And now I want, I found a man after my heart. I found a man after my, my heart. Now, Samuel did not know, you know, what is this man? How does that man look like? He, God just said to him, I found a man. And I mean, when God tells you I found a man, you are thinking that, okay, maybe it could be a big man like, like Saul, because Saul was tall. I mean, he was, he was voted by the Israel nation. They voted, they said, no, we want this guy, because this guy is tall, this guy is handsome, this guy is nice. They look at him, you know, he, he, all the other five features, he ticked. I mean, he took those, I mean, he, 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 he when you look at the gift, he read at the gift because he prophesied when, 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 when Samuel anointed him. Now, when you look at, at, at the, uh, the abilities, he had abilities that he had. When you look at the personalities, he had the personalities. When you look at, I mean, the experience, he had some experience when, 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 when he was anointed. But, you know, God is saying here, I have rejected this one. Many are called, but few are. Amen. It is one thing to be called. It's another thing to be, to, be, to, be, to be chosen. It is one thing to be called, but it's another thing to be, to be chosen. And for you to be chosen, the heart is very, very important here. Now, God says to someone, he's, he's not saying I found a man, you know, of stature, that my stature. No, he's not saying I found a man of my abilities. He's not saying I found a man of my personalities. He says, I found a man. I found a man of my heart. A man after my heart. What does that mean? A man whose heart resonates with my heart. A man whose heart beat, you know, take rhythm with my rhythm, with my heart rhythm. So I found a man, you know, who, who, who has that connection. A man who understands my purposes. A man who understands what I want to do. I found a man who can become a king and lead the way that I want him to lead. Amen. Now, you see, this is the heart of the ministry. The heart of the ministry is not how you look like. It's not even your gender. You see, I mean, some of you, you see, we're living in the gendered world. You see, the gendered world says to you, you are a lady, you are a woman, therefore you cannot become a pastor. You, I mean, you know, there are there's, there's churches even today that still say you cannot be a pastor if you're a woman. You cannot become this if you're a woman. You cannot become a bishop if you're a woman. You cannot become an archbishop. You cannot become a pope if you are. You know, you know what I'm saying? There are still things that are still there. But God is not saying, I found, he says, no, I found a man after my heart. God is looking for, for the heart. The heart of the ministry is there. Tell somebody next to you, hey, the heart of the ministry is the heart. The heart of the ministry is there. The heart of the ministry is, 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 is the heart. And the heart, you know, the heart knows no gender. It's not, the, the heart of the ministry is what? It is the heart. Now he says, I found 
a man of my heart. I found a man of my, my heart. That's what God needs. God is, looking after, God is not looking after all those four or five things that I've told you. Yes, they are important, but the most important thing, what makes one to be successful in ministry? What, whatever ministry that we're talking about, it is, the, it is the heart. Not just even the ministry in the form of the church. Everything that you do, if you have got the heart for it, you are going to succeed. Many people do things that they've got no heart over them. They don't have a heart for, them, for those things. But you know, and that's why many people will not succeed. If you've got a heart for something, if you've got a heart for prosperity, I'm telling you that heart for prosperity will see you prospering. You, 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 need, you, you need a heart for it. If you've got a heart for education, that heart for education will see you, will see you prospering, will see you going through. What the most important thing that God gives say, I need the heart. Now, God sent David here. He, he says somewhere here to Jesse, the house of David, for Jeff's father in Bethlehem. Now he says to him, when you get there, you know, you, when you get there, I, 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 I'll, I'll show you the man of my heart. I will show you the man of my heart. And I mean, sometimes God does not show us everything. He doesn't give us everything. See, God's revelation is always installment. Even the man of God, even the prophet, God sometimes doesn't give you the full picture. He gives you bit by bit. He gets into the, into, into, into the house of Jesse, and when he was there, now, that's where he's, he's coming to anoint. He said, take your horn and go and anoint. It's like when I'm standing here, I mean, there are many people, many of you, that God has already called. You know, many people that God has already called. And some of you, God has chosen them already. God has chosen you. But he says to me, yes, Pastor Madiba, take your horn. Take your horn of oil. Take the Holy Spirit and go. Go with the Holy Spirit and anoint. Go with the Holy Spirit and pray for my servant. Go and anoint my young people. Go with the Holy Spirit. And I'm standing here, you know. I mean, I, I can sometimes, it's half. I can just see God saying you will become this. God saying you're going to become this. God saying you're going to be a millionaire. You're going to become a big pastor. You're going, to be, you're going to run a huge church. You're going to have this and that. I can talk about all those things. But sometimes the revelation is just what I've half installment that comes down. Now, Samuel was a great prophet when he arrived there. See what he does now. He arrived there. He called uh, Samuel. He called, he called, Samuel called uh, Jesse and his, uh, his family. So, so he said when he has arrived, now he, 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 he's standing there. Verse 6. They, then he, when they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab. Hi. That was the first one. That, that was Jesse's son. He saw Eliab, Eliab coming, coming forward, passing them. When he saw them, when he saw Eliab and he thought, surely the Lord anointed stands here before me. When he saw, you know, there are guys that, you, when he saw them, he just said, you know, when they, he said, now, this is the one, this is the one. That means now, he was also being, well built, look, nice looking, and so on. But as he was saying that, God, God said to him, in that verse. And then verse 7. Verse 7. But the Lord said to Samuel. This is what I want. Listen to this very, very carefully. Verse 7. And the Lord said to Samuel. Do not consider his appearance. <laughs> Amen. Tell somebody next to you. Ministry is not about appearance. Ministry is not about. Amen. I mean, this is not about, I've seen many people spend a lot of money ch buying shoes, buying, you know, all the jackets, shiny jackets and all kind of things and so on. Ministry is not about what? It's not appearance. How many? It's not about the appearance. It's about the function. It's not about the, it's not about the, the I, mean, I mean, you know, you know, you know, things are the most, the important thing about things is not really how they look like. It is the purpose which they do. You know, people always give a joke of, uh, of these cars that, that, uh, that, that transport money. Have you look at that car, how, how ugly it is. But that thing is carrying millions. That thing, that thing is, all of them, they design them, they're ugly. They are ugly, rough, and ugly, and all. But I'm telling you, that thing transports millions. That thing transports what? Millions. It's not how it looks like. It's not the appearance. Now, he says here, do not consider his appearance or his height. You know what? Appearance, you know, 
I mean, there are people who, who really rule themselves out because you are not very tall. You just say, no, I cannot be. I'm too short. I'm too short. To, <laughs> I'm too short to become in, to be in the ministry. I'm too short to become this position. I'm too short to occupy this level because now I'm not very high. I'm not really tall. The, this is for tall people. I'm too short for me for for me to to do that. And then, but God says, do not look at the, look at the appearance, how the person looks like. Do not look at the do not look at the height. And then he says again here. Uh, and again, do not look at the things people look at. Okay? Do not look at the things that people want, people look at. Then you say, people look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Say, heart someone. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the now, when God is looking for someone to, 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 for his ministry, what does he look? He's not looking at your appearance. He's looking at your... If it is good, I mean, if really your appearance just matches, happen to match your ministry, you know, but, but, but God is not looking at, at, your, at the appearance. God did not look at how I look like. God looks at the, at the heart. People look at the appearance, but God looks at the, at the heart. And then, verse 8 then Jesse called Abinad, Abinadab. There's another one. You know, I mean, this one is just passed on. Then another one came. He called the second one and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one too. So this one in terms of what? Age. So you see, they are starting with the most senior one, then coming down. Again, I want to tell you that ministry knows no age. Amen. Some of you, you are thinking that I will be into the ministry when, you know, I will do the ministry of this and that when I'm old. No, 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 no. Ministry knows no, no age. It's not a question of whether you are young or you are old. You see when I go further here. So, again, God says now, this one too, I'm not really choosing him. Then Jesse then, uh, 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 then had Shama. Shama passed by. This was the third one. Then Samuel said, no, eh? the Lord has not chosen this one too. I mean, this is the third one. Then Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen them. <laughs> seven, seven. All these best choices, all his best choices that were called, he, he called seven, but out of seven, none of them were found suitable to be chosen. Why? They were not found suitable to be chosen because of the, the heart. Okay? They did not have the heart of God. Now, then Samuel was confused. He has seven. He has seen seven. And it looks like they are all there. According to Jesse, all the kids that he has, that needs to be, to be made the king, to be anointed. According to him, these are, these are all the suitable candidates. There's no any other one. Amen. There's no any other one. So, now, then Samuel said, verse 11, so he asked Jesse, are they all the sons you have? Are these all the sons you have? I mean, I think then he said, yes, I, now I remember, I remember now. There is still the youngest. There is still the who according to him cannot be anointed. Who according to him cannot be called to become king. Who according to him cannot become anything other than looking after sheep. That is according to him. He cannot become any other thing except looking after the, the sheep. He said, there is this one who is out there, who is looking after the sheep. And let me tell you, they, they, when you read the brothers talking about him, those were not even many sheep. They were fewer. The, the brothers said to him, what are you looking for here? Because now you should be looking after those few sheep of our father. Now you come, you should be looking after what? the few things. That means now already what he was doing, it was not that he was looking after a big flock of sheep, but just a few a few, few sheep that, that was looking after them. But the father said, now, there is still there's this one. This one is the last born. This one, you know, just come in. You know, it's like the pastor said, go and anoint someone for me. They say, oh, there is this one who got saved yesterday. The one who just came to our church yesterday. The one who got saved last week. You know what I'm saying? But God says, he says here, this one, somebody said, call that one for me. Call that one for me. Call that one for me. And then you read further here. Then uh, Samuel sent him. He Samuel, then he 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 he, he said he said send him 
we will still we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health. So when he it's a small boy, you know, small boy, but glowing with what with health and had fine appearance. So that, I'm not saying that God only God still, but that's not the primary thing. Okay. He was glowing. He was still a nice boy. I mean, you know, but he was appear. His appearance was he was his, he was fine appear. He has a fine appearance, and he was always had hand, hand, some features. Then he, the Lord said, "Rise and anoint him. This is the one." <laughs> Amen. You know, sometimes God can make you to do things that uh, you know you, you you never believe it. When you are servant of God, God says, "I found a man. I found a, a man." I go and anoint a man into the ministry. I found a man. Now, what is standing before, what is standing before Samuel is not a man. It's a small boy. <laughs> it's a, a small boy. As if that was not enough, God said to him, yes, this is the one. Stand up and anoint him king. You hear what I'm talking about? Now, now you see, you see, when you, God is using you, you know, I mean, God is using you. Some, you. You got to understand what you are doing. You got to understand when God has sent you to anoint people. I mean, if you look at our ministry, it's full of young people. Only. Some people is asking me, Pastor, okay, how, how many, how, 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 how many, how many, how many men do you have? How many, how many women do you have? How many this you have? I say, no, <laughs> mine. <laughs> I've got very few men. <laughs> how, 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 how do you manage, man? Because people go for what? People will need really men who have already netted millions. You know, guys who are driving, you know, Ferraris, coming and pack them outside. But guys who are big, big, big men, when you come to the church, you know, you must see them packed along there so that you now you can see that these are... People say, how many people work at your church? I say, ah, it's me, my wife, my son, my, you know, my members are students. They look down. Say, oh, and how do you afford rent because of God. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, because of God. It's, 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 it's not what I'm saying. Yeah? Now, what I'm telling you is that when God has sent you, God has sent me, God has sent me to anoint you. God has sent me to anoint you, irrespective of your age, irrespective of what you are doing, irrespective of what you are doing, but God has sent me what? To anoint. It was nothing to do with what this boy had nothing. This boy had nothing. He was just coming from, he was just a head boy. He was just a, a head boy. And so, some men had to transform this head boy into a king. Not just a king, into a, a great king. How do you take a head boy and transform this young boy into a king? Anoint this boy into a king. Not just a king, one of the greatest kings. Who became the grandfather, the ancestor of Jesus Christ? You know what I'm talking about? Now, when God is sending you, don't go, we do not walk by sight. We do not walk according to what we see. We walk by faith. Amen? You know, I tell people, I say, you know what? Five years, give me five years and see what comes out of the young people that are there. How many millions, millionaires will come out of that? How many, I, say, I, I, I even post that there will be a president that will come. I don't know if there's someone who's in politics here. I even post that there will be ministers that comes out of that. There will be ministers, there will be ministers, there will be managers, there will be top people that comes out of that. I post about that because now I'm not just talking out to myself. God has sent me, take your oil, take your horn and go and anoint. Amen. How long will it take the small head boy to become a king? That, that's not, you know, you know, there was Saul there, and even Samuel himself was so afraid of Saul. He was so afraid of Saul. He was so afraid what Saul will do to him. Now, what about what Saul will do to this new baby boy that he is now anointing to become king over Saul? Amen. It is not, it is not the age. It is not in the appearance. It is not in the agenda. It is not on what you are doing. It's not based on your experience. It's based on the heart. God said, I found a man. 
Not a boy, not a boy. He said, I found a man, a man of my, my heart. I found a man of my, my heart. I found a man of my heart. So the heart has got nothing to do whether you are a student. The heart has nothing to do whether you are a first year student. The heart has got nothing to do from whether you are coming from which background, whether you are coming from which family. The heart has nothing to do with your race. The heart has nothing to do with your gender. It has nothing to do with that. God says, I found a man. I found a man with my after my my heart. When he came, the Bible say, Samuel, God confirmed. Because he knew he was going to doubt whether to anoint this one, whether to anoint. No, no. no. He, was, he said, stand up. Samuel, rise. Not just, don't anoint him sitting. Rise and anoint him. This is the one. Verse 13 it says here, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. <laughs> Amen. When God chooses you, when God chooses you, he's not going to do it in secret. He, David was anointed in the presence of the seven brothers. Seven brothers were standing there watching. You know, you, know, you don't understand how people feared somewhere. People feared Samuel in such a way that when, when he arrived in Bethlehem, when he arrived in Bethlehem, the whole, the Bible says, the whole city, people were so scared, were trembling. They went to him, they said, now, have you come here in peace or not? Because they knew as a prophet of man, as a prophet of God, if he can cast them, anything can happen in that city. They were all trembling. But imagine that man who is feared, standing in front of a small boy, in front of the, the brothers, anointing that boy. Amen. Imagine everybody is so fearful. Can, they cannot move, but that man is standing because God is saying, This is the boy. This is the man. This is the man after my heart. I found the man after my heart. Now, anoint this boy. The Bible says, As he anointed this person. Now, I'm coming to the point of Pentecostal day now. Now, as he does that, the Bible says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Amen. You know what it says here? Anointing, he anointed him. From that day, from that day, the spirit of the Lord became powerfully, powerfully. You know, you know, when we're talking about Pentecostal Day, Pentecostal Day or a Pentecost, it's not just a one incident. It's not just an event. The same thing with baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's not just what happens when you say just one word or two. No, 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 no. He, the Bible says the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit continue, continue to grow in him powerfully, powerfully. You know, so, we, you see, we talk about two things here. The baptism of the Holy Spirit and the, and the feeling, the feeling of the, the Holy Spirit. There are people who can tell you that I was baptized when 20 years ago, yes, I spoke one word in tongues. But that's not, you continuously feeling, feeling, you are continuously, for you to become a drunkard, you don't drink once, you get drunk one day and then tell people that I'm an alcoholic. No, you continue drinking. <laughs> Amen. You take one sip and speak broken English and then from there you say, hi, you know, <laughs> the, the real guys who drink will tell you, no, sit down, you don't know how these things are done. If you become a drunkard, you must tell me every day, 8 o'clock, I'm already gone. So it, I don't know how 6 o'clock happens. Because by the time 6 o'clock happens, I'm already disappeared. I'm already gone into another world. Then I go and sleep drunk. Then I woke up. When I woke up, 8 o'clock again. Same thing. I cannot tell you. I only see the sun rising. I don't see the sun setting. Amen. Now, the Bible says, David grew powerfully. Powerfully. Now, what do we do here? We ask you, come for, for the baptism. Some of you come here. Yes, the Holy Spirit touched you immediately. You are speaking in tongues. Others, you, you just stand there. But you, you receive. You know, that, that, that day I was meditating with God. I said, God, but why some people instantly get, you know, the Holy Spirit and speak? They, they speak in tongues. Others, not. God said, no, it's not up to you. Okay? 
You know, when you learn a language, you don't stand because um, you say, you know, when a child is born, some, some kids really speak, learn to speak quickly. Others take time to, to speak. Other, so, so, but what is important is that people are growing in the Holy Once you receive the Holy Spirit, you are growing. You are growing in the, in the Spirit. The feeling is happening. The feeling is happening. Where the breaking point will happen in your life, I don't know. Okay, but, but the breaking point happens when definitely the feeling and the ability that you have begin to match and then you are able to so others speak instantly, others don't speak instantly. So, so but the fact that now, if somebody comes and receives, you come stand here and say, I'm receiving. You receive. You receive. What do you do with what you have received? It's not, you know, David was anointed. David was anointed. And then the Bible says, we don't see any, we don't see him falling. We don't see him any anything happen. No. But he was uh, anointed. The Bible says he, he, he grew powerfully in the spirit there. The only time that we see that this boy really was anointed, it is when he was facing the target. Amen. When he was facing the target, when he was facing the challenge, that's the only time we see, we see the anointing comes in. We see the anointing comes in. When he was facing Goliath, it was when he was facing Goliath that what some, otherwise what some had done there, he just put the oil and then he left. When he left him, I mean, there was nothing miraculous that he has seen David doing. He, but the brother saw this, is, this event happening. But let me tell you, when the God has found you, you are after his heart. And God anoint you. When God anoint you, that anointing stays in you. It does not go. That anointing stays in you. It's not something that you have to, to feel anointing when you're, when you're sitting in the taxi. You are feeling anointing. No. And anointing happens when it gets the targets. When there's a target in front of that, then the anointing is released. When the target stands in front, then the anointing. When you face the challenge, some of you have been anointed here. So anointed so mighty. But because you have not really, you know, come across, experienced that target, I'm telling you, when you go home now during the holiday, some of you, the moment you get into your house, you'll feel the anointing. Amen. The moment you, you move in areas where, where there is, there is some, some other negative power, you will feel, you feel the anointing comes upon you. You'll see the power of God moving you. You'll feel the God, you'll feel, you'll, the anointing will be released. The moment you come across sicknesses, the moment you come against demons, I'm telling you, that anointing is, 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 is released. Let me go back again to Samuel. 13 verse 14. I'm finishing. But now the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people. Okay? Appointed him ruler of his people. And when again, I think in the book of Acts, it says the same thing again. I'm not going to read everything that I have here. In the book of Acts chapter 13 verse 22. It says here, verse 22, after removing Saul, he made David their king. That was, you know, God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. I found a man after my own heart. Again, this is what is being quoted in the, in, the, in the Acts. I found a man after my, my own heart. He will do what I want him to, to do. Now, I just want quickly to summarize the one incident that happens here, which I'm not going to talk much about. If you read the First Samuel chapter 17, I will just paraphrase a few things because the time is gone. First Samuel chapter 17, if you read that one, I just want to show you the difference between the man of God's heart and the man who has got no God's heart. A man after God's heart, when you read that, 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 that book, that chapter, First Samuel chapter 17, it speaks about the such time when the Israelites were facing the, the Philistines. And the Philistines had this big man called Goliath. And then Goliath, the Bible says this man was armed from, from the toe to the head. You, he was impenetrable. You cannot touch him. You cannot, you cannot do anything. I mean, the Bible says Saul by then was the key. Saul was the, was the key. You, know, he was, you, know, you see, the, 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 it is the heart that makes the difference. It is not the abilities. It is not how you look like that makes... The Bible tells us that you, when, when the... The, 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 the Philistines were on the other side and Israel was on this other side and every day they draw the battle line. Every day 
Goliath will stand up and move on the side of the Philistines. He was the champion of the Philistines. And then he will come and stand in front and then say, I need a man. Okay, I need a... I need a... I need a man. If you send me, bring a man forward. If that man killed me, if he killed me, all my people surrender to you. But if I kill him, then all your men surrender to me. But I need a, a man. Now, you see, when you're not a man enough of God, you know it. Saul was standing in front. The Bible says, every time Saul saw a Goliath coming, Saul went backwards. He put on reverse gear. He put on reverse gear. If, you, know, you know what I'm saying? When God says, I found a man, what, what is the difference between a man without the heart of God, who is not after God's heart, and the man with God's heart? A man, David came, it's a small boy, like he's doing the usual. He's coming from the, he's coming from the flock. He was, saved, he was sent to send the, his, the food to the brothers. Now, when he gets in there, when he arrived there, he saw this big, tall guy. This tall giant is moving, he's insulting, he's sharing, he's shouting at all these people, he's saying all this kind of thing to them. And I want to tell you, David says, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know the heart. When you've got the heart of God, the heart of God said, No, he, this man, who is this man who can speak this way against my God? Who is this man who can say against the nation of Israel? Who is this man? And then he said, Now, this man is an uncircumcised guy. This man, I can take him up. You, you see, the heart, the, it's not the size of the it's not the size of the man, it is the heart that a man has. His heart, the heart said no. The body says yes, but you are too small. He says no, but this man, I'm going to take him up. He even went, he even went, he even went to the big guy, the senior. He said, no, tell me, what is going to be given to the man who take this man up? Then he said, he said to Saul, he went to Saul. Saul stopped him and said, no, 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 boy. This guy has been a fighter since the age of eight. He has been a, a fighter since the age of do you know that there are problems that people will tell you? This problem, my child, that you are trying to deal with does not belong to your generation. It is your grandfather's problem. That was your grand-grandfather have these problems. This sickness you are talking about, you know, you, 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 hey, your grand-grandfather died of it. Your grand-grandmother died of it. This, 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 this thing is going down. This thing has been in the family for too long. But the heart of God the heart of God says, no. I'm going to take it up. Amen. The heart, you know, you know the, the man of God, David says, David says to Saul, Saul, says, Saul, wait, wait, wait. My heart is pumping. My heart, my, what, what, when these things is happening, what does my God's heart say? What is my heart? God, God's heart is pumping. God's heart is pumping against this man. God's heart is angry against this man. And my heart, when God's heart is pumping, my heart is also pumping. When God is against something, my heart is against it. When God is for something, my heart is also for something. When God does not like something, my heart too does not like that. You know, you know the, the heart after God's they, 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 a person really that God said, my heart, if you've got a heart that is after God's heart, that heart God. and he says, let me this man this man I can kill him, this man I will do him, I will do to him exactly what I did to the sheep to the wolves and the lions I'm going to cut his head I'm, I'm going to kill this man, I'm going to kill this man, I'm go you know, you know, that is the heart when you get into the ministry, you are not going to be moved by a situation. You're not going to be moved by a challenge. When you get into a ministry, you're not going to go back by any situation. Amen. Amen. He says, this man, I will kill him. This man, I will put him down. And, and listen, what he has in the hand, that's what I'm saying. When you go into the ministry, don't count what is in your hand. Amen. Don't count how much money do you have. It's not how much money. Some of you, pastor, you know, I want to start something. I want to do this, but I've got no money. Don't, don't, it's not a question of money. It is a question of what God wants you to, to do. It is a question of the, the heart. 
God says, I want you to win the whole village. You, it's not a question of whether you've got loud speaker or you've got what. No, it is a question of what the heart that God has put in you. God, you want to get into business? Um, it's not a question of really how much you have. No, it's a question of what now? It's a question of the heart that you have. And the Bible says, as David was moving forward, even Saul, Saul took off his, his, his attire. His, 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 his army, 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 so color clothes and tried to put it up on David. And David says, no, 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 I can't work with this. I can't work with. When you go into ministries, people want to give you many things. They want to give you many, many things. They will give you many, many things that will help you to run the ministry. They will help you many, many, many things. They said, I cannot work with this. I work with my God. I work with my I walk with my, I walk with my God. I don't need any other help. And it, when you read this whole thing, I'm not going to really delve much better, but I just want to show you the heart, that when you have got the heart after God's heart, that heart does not go backwards. Irrespective of what is in front of you. Irrespective of what challenges that you get. Irrespective of my, how many times you fall down, how many times you fail. It is not really how you fail. It is the heart that you carry. The heart of the ministry is there. The heart of the ministry is there. The heart of the ministry is there. It is the heart. David had a heart for ministry. And the Bible tells you, he said to this guy, you come against me with the as a guy, with all the spears, you are coming against me. But I come against you in the name of my Lord. I come against you in the name of the... Some people say he was taking a risk. It's not a risk. When you have got a heart of God, when you take steps, when you take steps into business, when you take steps into, into whatever profession, when you take steps into the, the church ministry, when you take steps, it's not a risk. It is called the heart of God. It is called the, the heart of the heart of God. The Bible tells you, let's just stand up, I'm finishing, and then we are going to get the whole communion. The Bible tells us David, it's not David, it is the heart of the heart of God. The heart of God, he moved forward he, with a sling. You, know, it's, you see, the heart plus anything, it doesn't need any assistance. The heart, the heart, it is the heart that gives you victory. It is the heart that gives you a victory. In respect of many challenges that you are feeling. I mean, some of you are students right now. It is not, no, I'm, I'm telling you, you know, what has made me to succeed it's not really, it was not, I mean, I don't think I'm a genius. I don't think I'm a genius at all. I'm not a genius. But I'm telling you, when it comes to my area, I've got the heart of it. I can sit the whole night working on something and wake up in the morning and go and deliver a keynote address. Sitting the whole night, sitting the whole night. And, and it's not the brain, it's not the brain, it is the heart. It is in the if you don't have a heart for something, I'm telling you, you open one book, one chapter, we finish, before you finish one chapter, you, you are yawning, you are yawning, you are yawning, you know, you are, you are falling asleep. But if you've got a heart for something, if you've got a heart for a profession, if you've got a heart for it, I'm telling you that you can sit 24 hours without really any break. You can sit for that long and you'll be able to do, to do that. Same thing with a ministry. A ministry, you need the heart for Amen. If you want to sing here, you want the heart for, for singing. It, it, you need the heart for the, the what, what, when you see, God must see. If you want to preach, you want the heart for preaching. When you are preaching, God is preaching. When you are ministering, God is ministering. It is not, it's not what you do, it is what God is saying. It was God is, is, is doing, it's what God is, is saying there. So, the heart of the ministry is there. Is the heart. It's not your ability. It is not, but the heart of the ministry is your, is the heart. So I, I just want, as I'm saying here, you know, why I'm talking about this. Some of you now, you, you, you are going home, you are going to different places. I want to tell you, it is not really what happens here. Your ministry, the anointing that you have, your anointing, when you go home, when you go back, I'm telling you, 
God is going to use that anointing that we have. Sometimes there will be a situation, there will be challenges. Will be, those challenges when they happen, don't say, no, God does not love me. God, no, 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 no. God wants to trigger your, your anointing. The anointing that you've been getting here, God wants to trigger that anointing. Sometimes, I've seen people say, oh, somebody got sick here, the child happened this, and then I lay hands and the person, and you are surprised. You know, when the, God has anointed you, you know, the, the, the disciples, the disciples after Pentecostal, I'm telling you, they never knew that they've got the power to heal. They never knew that they can preach the gospel. But the Bible says, as they were running away, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing was being released. They were doing miracles. They were doing many other things. Now, as you spread now the holiday, to me, that is time for crusade. Okay? Amen. It's not just time for, for holiday. When you go home, it's time for you to release what? The anointing that God has given you. And if you don't, God will use situations to trigger your anointing. Amen? Some of you will see problems. Some of you say, I wish, I wish I should not have come back from Cape Town. Really, I wish I should have stayed there. You know, in Cape Town, I had peace. I've got, I've got, I, I've got good time there. But since I came back here, here it's fight. It's fight every day. It's fight every day. God wants you to release your anointing. Amen. God is triggering your ministry. Now, many are called, but few are, are chosen. God, there are many people as you stand here. God is saying, these people, they are people who are after my heart. Just anoint them. Just anoint them as you go home. Just anoint them. I don't know. I'm, I know, you, you know. You know, I'm telling you, when I was a student, I would not like to go home. I'm telling you, when holiday comes, the most terrible time for me, it was me going home. Because there was no church in my area. There was no church. There was nothing. Just one traditional. There was no church. There was no one who saved in my house. There was no Christian. Not in my house. In the whole village. There was no one who saved. Amen. But God put his heart upon me. So you are all. You'll be going now. You'll be leaving. You'll be going home. Let me say people who are leaving. People who are going. People who are going. Last weekend, oh, see so your last, okay. I can see some people are saying goodbye to me. Lift your hand. I just want to see your hand. Because I want to pray for you. Lift up your hand up. Lift up your hand up. Okay. So many of you have been chosen already. Just lift up your hand. I want to see, okay. I see the hands are up. I just want to pray for you now as you lift up your hands. I don't know. I don't know where you come from. I don't know what is happening in your family. I don't know your area where you come from. You know, I don't know. You see, every area has got its own demons. Every area. You come to Cape Town, Cape Town demons are gangsterism. So I don't know. I don't know the demons in your area. Some of them, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, what kind of things that happens there in your area. I don't know the situation in your family and so on. But I just want to pray. Release anointing over you. Just anoint you over anything. 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 Amen. Someone was warning somebody, saying, no, when you go home, I think this is Shalom was just joking with others. When you go home, please just watch the witchcraft, the witches, you, the witches. Th that's not an issue, okay? Just laughing at that. You know what I'm saying? It's real. It's reality, okay? I just want to pray for you. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, I pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, Father, I just want to pray, Father God, Lord, for all the hands that are raised, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, those who are living today, Father, this is the finalizing, the final weekend with us right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I lift up your horn in Jesus' name and release, Father, the anointing, Father, Lord, of your Holy Spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. I anoint them in the name of Jesus, Father God, Lord. Father, I just release you are anointing, Father God, Lord. Your anointing removes burden, Father. It breaks yoke, Father God, Lord. It breaks, Father God, it breaks all the burdens, Father, that they found, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, I just pray for the environment from which they come from, Lord. Father, I just pray, Father, 
They live, Father God, here, Lord, full of your anointing, Father. They live like David, Father God, going to face Father Goliath. They live like David, Father, going to face Saul, Father God, Lord. I just thank you, Father, for the power that is upon them, Father Lord God. Father, I just release your whole spirit, Father God, anointing over them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. No challenge, no problem, Father, that will affect their lives, Father God. I also, Father God, release your ministry, Father God, Lord, upon them, Father. Whatever, Father God, when they go out, Father, let them, Father God, witness. Let them, Father God, testify, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you, Father God. We glorify you, Father, for them right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, Father. We thank you, Lord God. We adore you, Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you. Amen, amen. Amen. Can just give God a big hand. I want to give you this scripture. Just quote this scripture whenever you get home. If you feel so afraid, for God has not given me the spirit of fear, but has given me the spirit of power, the spirit of what? Love. And the spirit of what? Of sound mind. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you are walking, you know, the Bible has given you, God has promised you victory. God has given, so what? You are walking over darkness, the spirit of darkness. You are walking over whatever the devil is doing, but you go there full of the power. So let's just read the, Holy, the book that we are going to use for the Holy Communion. It says Matthew chapter 26. We read from verse 20. Let me read from verse 20, 29. 28, 26 says here. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and gave it, given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is why blood, this is my blood of, or, or, this of the new covenant, which is being poured out for many. So, I'm just going to just take that, that Holy Communion. If you take this piece, you will see here there are two things there. If you, you those who are just really doing it for the first time, you, you just break it from in front, you are going to see that there is a bread that is on top of that. fight on top. And Jesus said, you know, when we're taking the Holy Communion, the Holy Communion, the Bible tells us that it, the first part, it, repre it represents the body of Christ. Then the second part, which is the, the, the Jews, represent the blood of Jesus. So we are been talking about really a man after, you know, a man after God's heart. A man after God's heart. A man after God's heart. A man or woman after God's heart. It's not really, really you are jealous not what, but just simply say, God says to you, you are a person. You are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. You are a generation after my heart. You are a generation after my heart. And when we partake this with him, we are partaking his, his body. So, Father, we pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as you pray, Father, for the body of Christ, Father. We just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. As you are going to partake this body, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you bless, Father God, Lord, this whole communion. We also bless, Father God, Lord, the, the Jews that we have here, which represent the blood of Jesus, Father. We thank you, Father God, Lord, that you have chosen us, Father. We are Father God, Lord, the chosen generation, Father. I thank you, Father Lord God. This is the chosen generation, Father God, Lord. You have chosen them. You have not just called them. You have just also, you have also chosen them, Father Lord. We thank you, Father, as we are going to eat. Bless, Father, this whole communion, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Amen. We can eat the bread.
Yeah. 